America is so fortunate to have as the next Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Election night 2006, and change was in the air. Today, the American people voted for change, and they voted for Democrats to take our country in a new direction. The Democrats were going to clean house, they promised. And the Democrats intend to lead the most honest, most open, and most ethical Congress in history. For the first time, lawmakers would post the details of each congressional earmark, its sponsors and value, and they would be required to submit a letter for each of these pet spending projects, complete with its purpose and the exact name and address of the beneficiary. In the letters, lawmakers would also certify that neither they nor their spouses had a financial interest in the project. Across the country, in Seattle, one journalist was paying especially close attention. I thought now that we have reforms, I'll be able to tell the whole story on the relationship between money and earmarks. Seattle Times investigative reporter David Heath turned his sights to the 2008 defense bill, the first passed under earmark reform. Just to be sure Congress was telling the whole truth, Heath cross-checked Congress's official list of earmarks against those he was able to verify on his own, and he made a disturbing discovery. Despite the reform, Congress is still hiding earmarks. So it became a much better story. It wasn't about a corrupting process. It wasn't about wasteful earmarks that were local pork and local pet projects. It was beyond that. It was actually all of that plus active deception and hypocrisy. Joined by his colleague Christine Wilmson, David Heath spent months following the money, painstakingly reviewing each disclosure letter, beginning with those from the House of Representatives. There was well over a thousand of these letters, and we took these letters and we basically made a database out of them. Under the new rules, members must disclose the exact recipients of their earmarks. Reporting only the federal entities through which the dollars get dispersed is not allowed. For people who obey the rules, the disclosure in the House is pretty good. But not everyone obeys the rules. We found over 100 cases where a member of the House wasn't really honest. They said the entity getting the funding was the Department of Defense or the Office of Naval Research which doesn't really tell us anything. What we want to know is who's actually getting the money in the end. And, and the, this money is almost always going to a contractor, a vendor, a company. Without knowing who's actually getting the money in the end, there's no way to track whether lawmakers are getting campaign contributions from the same people to whom they're funneling earmark dollars. The money trail goes cold. The disclosure letters in the House may have been imperfect, but they proved far more informative than those the reporters found in the Senate. When Heath and Wilmson checked, each senator's disclosure letter said virtually the same thing. All it says is that for all the earmarks I've done, I promise you there's no conflicts of interest. That's all it says. How the Senate managed to hide the details of its earmarks while publicly proclaiming reform is a story of masterful parliamentary sleight of hand. Watch closely or you'll miss it. As soon as he took over, new Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid pledged to come clean on earmarks as part of a massive new ethics bill. The underlying legislation that is bipartisan in nature, sponsored by the Democratic and Republican leaders, is good legislation. It's a significant step forward anything that's happened in this country since Watergate. Ethics reform, lobbying reform, earmark reform, a very sound piece of legislation. But what Senator Reid wasn't saying was that the reform measure contained a caveat. 
Senators wouldn't have to disclose any earmarks that went to federal entities. But in the defense bill, almost all the earmarks first go to federal entities before being passed along to private contractors. In effect, senators would be able to hide almost every earmark. And that prompted a challenge from Senator Jim DeMint, a champion of earmark transparency. The South Carolina Republican began with a startling admission. Many in this chamber know that I don't often agree with Speaker Pelosi. But Speaker Pelosi has the right idea. And a stunning proposal. As an amendment to the ethics bill, the staunchly conservative Republican, DeMint, proposed that the Senate adopt word for word the House version of earmark reform, marshaled through by the liberal Democrat, Nancy Pelosi. We proposed the DeMint Pelosi amendment, and I presented it on the floor. And the, uh, the place was quiet. This is the language that our new Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, has put in this lobbying reform bill in order to make it more honest and transparent. It was a brilliant tactical move. If the Democratic majority was to reject DeMint's amendment, it would mean rejecting the much stronger earmark disclosure rules crafted under their own party's high-profile Speaker of the House. Harry Reid did not want this to come for, for a vote. Uh, he made a motion to table it, which gives the members some cover because you're not really voting against the amendment, you're just voting to table it. Tabling the so-called DeMint Pelosi amendment would mean removing it from consideration, effectively killing it. I would appeal to my friend from South Carolina. I repeat, I know that you're doing this because you think it's the right thing to do. But take the opportunity to look at what's here. It's better than the House version, so much better. I've only touched upon what it's And Senator Reid assumed, as most people did, including me, that he would get 51 votes to table it. And we had a few uh, heroes on the Democrat side that joined us. Barack Obama, a relatively new senator, bucked his party and voted with us. On this vote, the ayes are 46, the nays are 51. The motion to table is not agreed to. And we defeated the tabling motion. Well, once the tabling motion failed by a vote or two, everyone knew they were going to have to vote on the real thing, and it was like 98 to nothing. I mean, this is the kind of thing that if, if senators know America can see what they're voting on, they were afraid not to vote for it. Indeed, with all eyes watching, 98 senators voted in favor of the artfully crafted DeMint Pelosi amendment. Not one opposed it. The junior senator from South Carolina had taken on the powerful Senate majority leader and won. Or so it appeared. Remember, this was an amendment to a wide-ranging ethics bill. And before a bill becomes a law, its final language must be worked out between both houses of Congress. Steve Ellis, a leading earmark reform advocate in Washington, explains how the game works. So rather than doing what the House did, which was simply change the rules, you're done the next day, the, the, everything has changed and you have to abide by earmark reform, people could still modify it before it actually ended up becoming the rules of the Senate. Which is precisely what happened. Frankly, as we all know, we're going to have to do some work to improve this. Behind the scenes, as the final language to the ethics bill was being hammered out, a mysterious new provision was slipped in. There it is. Paragraph 6, subparagraph A5. Senators would submit letters to committee chairpersons containing all the earmark information, but they would tell the public only that they have no pecuniary, meaning financial, conflict in the projects they were sponsoring. They essentially said that the public can only get this last little thing which says, I'm not a crook. As for who's actually getting the earmark money, that remains a Senate secret. The Senate leadership that was behind gutting this bill were really evil geniuses. This is a provision where I looked specifically at it as soon as it came out. Other people in Washington who work on earmark reform looked specifically at this provision to make sure that we were going to get the information that we were promised, and we missed it. And they did exactly what I was afraid of. They killed earmark reform. 
It's a stunning disappointment and a huge miss opportunity. It completely guts earmark rules we all agreed to back in January. And Once they got the loophole created behind the scenes, they figured that no one was going to pay attention. But someone did pay attention. After months of work, David Heath and Christine Wilmson had tracked down every hidden earmark they could find in the 2008 defense bill. There were 155 of them. And those hidden earmarks were worth three and a half billion dollars. So that, that was 40% of the earmark money in the defense bill. Among those Congress failed to reveal, according to David Heath, $588 million to accelerate the construction of a submarine the Defense Department hadn't even asked for in its appropriations request. The largest earmark in the entire bill. The reporters tracked the earmark to the giant defense contractor, General Dynamics. They also discovered that the Office of Management and Budget had opposed the earmark, saying it would take resources away from more urgent defense needs. $588 million dollars on a submarine the Pentagon did not want, and in fact that the administration said, please take this out of the bill. Then there was the $18 million for Latrobe Specialty Steel. Courtesy of Democratic Congressman John Murtha, powerful chairman of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, and one of Capitol Hill's leading earmarkers. Latrobe, which sits in Congressman Murtha's Pennsylvania district, had made political donations to Murtha. There was a dotted line between Congress, who they received campaign contributions from, and who got earmarks. When the reporters asked why the congressman hadn't disclosed the Latrobe steel earmark, they were told through a Murtha spokesman that the measure was competitively bid. And according to the congressman, that meant it wasn't an earmark at all. They said, oh, well, that can't be an earmark because it says right in the bill that it's supposed to be competitively bid, which, by the way, all earmarks are supposed to be competitively bid. But it turns out that in this particular case, there wasn't a competitive bid because the company was the only company in America that could actually qualify for this earmark. We found that Congress played word games, almost something straight out of George Orwell, about what is and is not an earmark. I mean, if it looks like an earmark, it, it acts like an earmark, an average person applying common sense would say it's an earmark, it's an earmark. I think we could have investigated for years to try and find all the earmarks that were hidden. Uh, it's just incredibly difficult to find them, and they're still mysterious ones out there today that we can't track. Congress are the ones who determine whether or not earmark disclosure has been met. They're essentially your ultimate Homer referees that are deciding these games. That means, as the Seattle Times would report, even if lawmakers break the earmark rules, they face no punishment. Just don't disclose. Nothing's going to happen. Right? Nothing's happened so far. I mean, we've found people that haven't disclosed and they're not necessarily facing discipline or getting investigated by the Ethics Committee. Joe Citizen can't figure out what's not being disclosed. I mean, you have to go through the bill and analyze each and every line item to see whether or not it's been disclosed or not. And that's just not something the average person can do.